This was just released a few days ago, like end of May 2023. It might actually be the end of sucralose for a lot of people. Personally, if someone were to pressure me to consume a little bit of sugar or consume sucralose, I might have to opt for the sugar now. Like I don't, I don't know where we stand. I've never been a big sucralose consumer to begin with, but I've always tried to handle this with delicate gloves because I know it's a sensitive topic. But this newer paper suggests that Splenda or sucralose, I should say, is genotoxic, damages our DNA. Now, full disclaimer, it is an in vitro study. So that means that it was done in a Petri dish, but hear me out, we have to unpack all of this, like, because we can't unknow what we've just discovered and it changes things. Let's dive in. After today's video, I popped a link down below for House of Macadamias. If you like macadamia nuts, you gotta check them out. That's a 20% off discount link that also gets you a free box of sea salt macadamia nuts. So a full box of macadamia nuts plus 20% off whatever you want. All grown in South Africa, harvested less than an hour's drive from where they package and do everything there. So we're talking fresh, we are talking the best bargain you're gonna find, especially with that discount, and we're gonna find wholesome ingredients that actually benefit the farmers themselves. So that link down below, if you wanna try some amazing macadamia nuts, House of Macadamia is changing the world. We're seeing Tim Ferriss talk about them, we've seen Joe Rogan, we've seen them all talk about them now, so we know they're legit, we know people like them, but that link down below gets you a special discount. Yeah, so check them out. This is scary stuff, like it really is real. And I know that you open yourself up to scrutiny whenever you talk about artificial sweeteners. And the previous studies with artificial sweeteners are difficult because they're typically done in rodents with ridiculous doses. This is a little different. So with sucralose, what they do is they take three of the hydroxyl groups and they add chlorine to them. So basically you've taken a sugar molecule and you've added chlorine to it instead of the hydroxyl groups. So it seems pretty benign on the surface, but that's what makes it 600 times sweeter than sugar. Now, what we've now seen is that there is a byproduct that's called sucralose 6 acetate, and that's exactly what this study was looking at. So sucralose 6 acetate is, uh, gets in the body two different ways. One, it gets in the body through the manufacturing process. When they're actually making sucralose, it comes as an impurity an impurity or an intermediary sort of in the manufacturing process. So you ingest a little bit just by ingesting it to begin with. But a little while ago there was a study, not the study in question, but there was a study that found that when mice ate sucralose, the levels of sucralose 6 acetate that they pooped out were quite a bit more than what they ate. So they're like, well, something's going on. They're producing some in the body. Come to find out now that we know that the gut bacteria in our gut metabolize sucralose. They metabolize this artificial sweetener and turn it in to sucralose 6 acetate. So sucralose itself doesn't seem to be super bad, like we've seen it affect the gut microbiome, that could be bad, but what really seems to be the thing in question is this sucralose 6 acetate. So as this is unfolding, do I feel like everyone needs to go and throw away any Splenda or sucralose? I don't know if we're there yet, but let's keep unpacking this. So this new study is now finding that sucralose 6 acetate affects the gut cells independent of the gut bacteria. So what they found is it damages the epithelial cells and it actually makes the gut junctions break down so that, well, it's a more inflammatory situation. So it's actually affecting the gut, not just the gut bacteria. Which again, you look at that, you say, okay, well that's in vitro data, is that really meaning anything? And I understand because we can't take in vitro data to the bank but it's not the gut junction, gut stuff that really scares me. It's the toxicity to the DNA. That's the part that's getting sketchy. So let's look at the genetic data here. They found that it was genotoxic. Now there are hard rules against genotoxic compounds. Let's put it this way. In Europe, you're allowed to have 0.15 micrograms of something that is considered genotoxic. That is the maximum. Okay, what we have now seen is that there is enough of a genotoxic compound in one sucralose sweetened beverage to exceed that allowable amount. 
So we are uncovering stuff. Let's break it down more. What genes did it affect? Well, they saw that it was genotoxic in lymphoblastoid cells. These affect inflammation, they affect oxidation, they affect potential cancers, but realistically more work needs to be done here. Like this is in vitro. It's not enough for me to throw out all the Splenda that I've ever seen, but it's enough for me to consider, well, I don't use it anyway, but it's definitely enough for me to like really look at a label now and probably, again, opt for just a little sugar. I'd rather just have sugar than deal with something that's a total mystery at this point. At least I know my body can kind of deal with sugar, right? Now, as far as gene expression, this is where it's kind of weird. A 253-fold increase in expression of MT1G genes. These are genes that are associated with, once again, inflammation, oxidative stress, and cancer. A 253-fold increase. Now, is it going to be the same in humans? It might be less, but it also might be more. And I just don't know if I want to roll the dice on that. Again, people can like say that I'm wrong, but I'm not saying that this is 100% going to happen in a human. I'm saying once we know this, do we really unknow it? The other gene that it seems to affect is CYP1A2, which affects the liver's ability to appropriately detox. So, I mean, we've got some weird stuff going on there. But just to know, I mean, when you're increasing the expression of a gene, you're not literally increasing the gene, you're increasing the expression of something that would encode for a gene. So, in very human terms, what that means is it's increasing the potential, but it's not directly increasing that gene. But the fact that it has an impact in this situation that is what's a little bit odd. The other thing that we have to consider is they noticed that when you had this in a Petri dish, and you had sucralose, the bacteria that would normally be in your gut that's in a Petri dish was creating a lot of this sucralose 6 acetate. That's a Petri dish. How much of that bacteria is in your gut? 10 times more? 20 times more? 100 times more? 1,000 times more? By sheer volume, the more bacteria you have metabolizing this, the more you potentially produce, right? So if I take five packets of sucralose and I put it in a Petri dish with, let's say, one billion bacteria, how much will it produce? If I put the same amount of packets of sucralose in my gut microbiome with five trillion bacteria, who knows, right? How much will it produce? It's not necessarily dependent on the amount of sucralose you consume, it could be dependent on the bacteria. So. I urge you to just use caution and to think about things. I'm not overweight anymore, so do I really have a need to ingest sucralose when I have other options? I'm not overweight anymore. Do I really crave sugar? Do I even want sugar? I don't, I don't know. Like, I'm not overweight anymore. Would it be better for me to just, I don't know, have some fruit, get my sweet tooth fixed with some fruit? Maybe have a little bit of something sweet and just know that I'm going to burn it off and be active and live a healthy lifestyle? Or do I opt for something that's a serious question? I think we have other options. We have stevia, we have monk fruit. I would even think that maybe aspartame is better than this. Maybe a mild conversion into methanol from aspartame is better than what we're seeing here. It's just a, such a mystery. I think this might have the potential to end sucralose for a lot of people. And I just encourage you to do your homework. As always, I'll see you tomorrow.